Hey guys, welcome back to Kelly's Creations. Thank you for stopping by. I'm so excited you're here. Today we are going to be doing a thrift store flips, a few of them. But first I wanted to share this with you. My husband surprised me last Saturday and he said, let's go thrift shopping, which he never does. <laughs> So I think that was my Mother's Day present. And then while we were there, I found this amazing vase, which I put a candle in. It kind of looks like that's what it was meant for. I'm not really sure what it was meant for, but a candle fits perfect. And one thing I have been looking for forever is this wired cloche. And I found one. So that was just like the best Mother's Day present. Not only did he want to go through store shopping with me, but we found something I've been looking for for so long. Thank you all for the happy Mother's Day wishes last week. You're all so sweet. And yes, the sushi was amazing. <laughs> Best Mother's Day dinner ever. All right, let's get into this project. This is a brass, I guess, planter. Um, you can find these at thrift stores all the time. So with some spray paint, I use chalk paint in a creamy color. And some sandpaper, you can bring this brass planter to life. Brass was very popular when I was little. I think everybody had, what was it called, home interiors, I think, with all the brass all over the place. <laughs> so you actually do see it a lot in thrift stores now. And if you just spray paint it, and I always let the piece distress itself. I just take the sandpaper wherever it hits, it hits. I just like that. I'm a more chunky distresser. Um... So wherever it comes off, it comes off, and I go with it. But the brass showing through the paint I think is amazing, and I just think it gives this piece just so much farmhouse style and really brings an old piece back to life. And I'm loving this now. So I had to share with you what I put in it. As you can see, I did not bother worrying about what was inside. I took out the nasty <laughs> leafy arrangement that it had in it, but I didn't remove any of whatever sticky part is on the bottom. I spray painted over it just because I knew I was going to be using it again for another arrangement. So grabbing some floral foam, I cut it down to size. I used the extra pieces on each side and these are picks that I got from Walmart. I love Walmart's greenery. Um, I think it just looks a little bit more high-end than Dollar Tree. And this is fern and eucalyptus. And I either have five, four or five picks. And I just start putting it in until it's full. And I just think it turned out so cute. I think I paid 99 cents for the planter, so I'm trying to remember if I had four or five picks. I think I had four, so we're going to say this whole project cost $5. And I know I love Marshall's plants and TJ Maxx's plants, but I can't get one this big for $5. <laughs> so it's so worth it to just go to those thrift stores, go to Goodwill, go to your local ones, and just think just by using paint, spray paint, how much better a project can be. It's so much fun. And I absolutely love this little planter now. I'm so excited.
So my next little project, I've had this for a long time. Got it at a thrift store. And I think it's to hold like cheese for parties or um, I've just had it as a decor piece in my buffet. So what I want to do is just give it some life, but not in the normal way, <laughs> I guess. A little abnormal. There was a lip at the top of the cloche, so I thought, let's just tape it off. And we're going to spray paint the top, and then I had this beautiful, like, greenish-blue spray paint in the chalk paint to do the base. It was so pretty, I'm not even distressing it, which if you watch me do these thrift store flips, I distress everything. But I actually really loved that base. So I painted the top with the cream. I just wanted a pop of color. I don't think everything farmhouse has to be white or gray. <laughs> Sometimes you need that pop of color. And I think that that, I think it was called Serenity Blue in the chalk paint, just gives that beautiful color. And I love that the top of this, is, the handle is spray painted too, because it's unique and it's cute. It almost gives it a vintage look. I really like this. So now my little cabinet in our kitchen finally has a little pop of color. You'll see next, there's a lot of white going on. My next little flip also came from the Goodwill. Um, it originally came from Garden Ridge, and can you believe that these babies were $19.99 each, I think. I don't know. That's crazy to me. I hope they were $19.99 a pair. Anyway, I think I got them for $2 for both of them. And these I've been using as risers on the top of my hutch. And like I said with the last project, I just wanted some color. So I loved how the base of the last project came out. So I used that Serenity Blue and I just spray painted these dominoes. Um, I came in with sandpaper this time just to give it that little, I guess it just, since I let a piece go without distressing it, I had to grab the sandpaper. <laughs> I couldn't let two pieces go by without distressing. So I just gave it a little distressing. I added some wax, which I add to all of my pieces after I paint them to finish them off and make them smooth and it protects chipping. So I usually always add wax to it. Like I said, these I've always used as just risers. I've used them for height because I really didn't know what else to do with them. Um, and they're perfect on top of my hutch so I can stack other things on it. And this was cool because now I have a little pop of color on top of my hutch as well. So this next project, this is another item I've had forever. Um, years ago, I bought it at a thrift store. I probably paid 50 cents for it, and it needed a makeover. But it was very windy, and I think I was a little too heavy-handed with the spray paint. So after it dried and I brought it back in, I noticed 
a lot of runs, <laughs> many, many runs and drips. So my original plan was to take my husband's sanding disc and try to get as much paint off of it where the runs and the drips were and re spray paint it. But, and this might not be for everybody, I just thought as I was sanding this that it was really turning out unique and different and pretty cool. Um, it kind of was like darker at the bottom, so I decided to come up a little bit with the sandpaper and start swirling. Um, and so it kind of gave it, what is that, biolage, biolage, is that what it's called, effect, um, where it was darker and comes up later, but I kind of just left it. This was a little happy accident. Sometimes those are the best. As you can see now, I'm liking how the bottom is turning out. That's where most of my runs and drips from the spray paint were. So I'm just doing swirly motions coming up. And then I'm going around the spout, around the top. And I also take the sandpaper to the lid. Now, if you don't like chunky sanded items, this probably isn't for you. You could just be a lot more careful with your spray paint than I was. <laughs> Try not to get runs and drips and this would have been a really pretty just white piece. But I messed up so I had to fix it. And I think this is unique. I actually think it makes it look vintage and old and I kept it the way it was. So sometimes happy accidents are the best. The next one is super simple, super fast. I had this gravy boat that I had gotten. I put a little bit of that Serenity Blue, spray painted it for some more of that Serenity Blue on top of my cabinet. Um, this is in a birdcage that I recently purchased at a local thrift store. I love bird cages, absolutely love them. And it just gave it a cute little pop of that blue. And then on my Next piece, this is a cross I had in my hallway forever. So I'm going to take the cream color white and I'm only going to spray one coat on it. As you can see, I didn't even do the back because I am going to be coming in with the sandpaper and starting from the middle, working my way out, just kind of pulling the sandpaper on it to take off some of that paint and expose the black. It gives it such a neat technique. It looks like it was made that way. It makes it look rustic and vintage. And I love how this cross turned out. In the video, it's funny because I did not use Serenity Blue on this, but it almost has a bluish hue to it, which I'm really not sure why. I think that's just the way my camera was acting. Maybe it was picking up the blue from my table, but this is in the cream white paint. I took the glass candle holder and I also spray painted that with the cream and I came back in with my sandpaper and I went around the edges of the candle holder as well to highlight all of the ridges. This was a super simple and easy project just like the last one but such a big effect, such a drastic change and sometimes just painting is all you need to do to fall in love with a project all over again. So 
So for my last little thrift store flip, I did this video last year where I took this glass cake tray and gave it a coat of white chalk paint and sanded it and distressed it. And I did not ever add anything to the top of this. Um, I always meant to, but I just never got around to it. So I thought I would show you guys what I did. Um, the paint has never chipped off of this, surprisingly. But I was going to use my stencils from Dollar General and I was gonna stencil the top of this. But I was just, I guess I was having a really bad painting day because I've used these stencils before. I've never had an issue. And I was careful and I taped off the words above it so I wouldn't have any bleeding going on. I taped all around the stencil and it didn't matter. I was just having a bad painting day. <laughs> so it bled right through. And I had to think of plan B <laughs> because this wasn't just the first attempt at this that I'm showing you. This was the second. I had already messed up and repainted this. Now you're seeing the second attempt and I still couldn't get it right. So I always try to show you guys like my mistakes as well as my successes or what I think are my successes. <laughs> um, but as you can see, yeah, I, I couldn't leave it like this. Um, so we painted over it again and I went in my stash and I found these gorgeous decals, the rub-on transfers from Dollar Tree that were greenery. And I actually think that it was meant to be. There was a reason why I kept messing up on putting the stencil, and that was because it was meant to have the greenery on it because it turned out so much cuter. So here I am painting it again. And I had a subscriber recently tell me, painting glass, if you put Mod Podge on it first, let it dry, and then add your paint, it will not chip as much. And I really need to try that. But like I said, I haven't had a problem with this chipping off of the glass so far. It's been pretty good. Um, I put my rub-on stencils on here, and then, as always, I sealed it. And this is just clear wax from Lowe's. Um, I always seal my pieces when I chalk paint with that wax. Any distressing you do, I think that wax really highlights it, brings it out, makes it pop. But as I said before, it seals your project and prevents it from chipping and it also gives it a really smooth and great finish. So yeah, after a couple of failures with this little cake stand, it really, I think, turned out really cute. <laughs> And there it is with my chippy pot that I like. <laughs> this is fun. I love thrift store flips. Um, I took a little break from minis just because I really love doing these videos. And I just wanted to share it with you. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I appreciate you guys so much. And I hope that you come back next Sunday and check out my next video. Because I right now I can't tell you what it is because I kind of have crafters brain and I'm not sure what I'm going to do. <laughs> but I love y'all and I hope you're having a blessed and wonderful day. Don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe and I'll see you guys next Sunday. <laughs> Bye.